Welcome back to another video. Today we have none other than Steve Penny. He is our regular market analyst, researcher, and update every single Friday on your investments, on the economic and financial systems, on precious metals, gold, silver, mining stocks, uranium. And this happens every Friday to deliver the most value that we possibly can to you. So if you enjoy this and you like having Steve on, give us a comment right there down below and let us know that you enjoyed this. Give us a comment down below. Hit the like button right over there and right over there. That's the other way you can let us know that you enjoy this. And last but not least, be sure to support Steve's work. Right there down below is the free newsletter called Silver Chartist. The reason I had Steve on is because I went through the free newsletter and I was blown away. I said, Steve, this is better than most people's paid newsletter. This free alone is going to be worth a lot of money to folks. And I said, can you come on and do a regular market update for us? And so that's what we're going to be discussing here in this video. And I want to encourage you to sign up for free to Silver Chartist in the description and pinned to the comments right there down below. That's Steve's newsletter. Hey guys, Steve Penn here with another guest post on Jake's I Love Prosperity channel. Today is Friday, March 5th with a weekly update on silver, uranium, and gold. We plan to do this every Friday where we take a few minutes, cover the week that was, and try and anticipate what we might expect in the week ahead. Now last Friday we talked about gold losing that key support level at 1767. That di did trigger more follow through selling this week and that has indeed been difficult to endure especially for long time bulls who have been holding on for you know the long term when we've had to <laughs> endure these kind of pullbacks so many times in the past. Maybe we thought this time is different. I happen to still think that we are very close to a bottom and the downside risk is minimal relative to upside potential but that doesn't make this more easy to endure for a lot of people. Uh, personally, I welcome these pullbacks. Number one, because it gives me the opportunity to accumulate more shares at discounted prices. And frankly, I never thought I'd be able to buy some of these shares that I've really wanted to have more of a position in at such low prices. And number two, it gives new entrants to the space the opportunity to enter at much more favorable entry points. So I do welcome these pullbacks. What I do hate to see though is people throwing in the towel. And our human emotions often tell us to sell when we should be buying and to buy when we should be selling. And I think we're seeing a lot of that now. Now, personally, I don't try to nail bottoms or call bottoms. However, I do think we're very close to a bottom. So my personal strategy involves just scaling in over time and scaling in on weakness. And this, this current environment does highlight the importance of every single person having a personalized strategy for not only how to handle downside volatility, but it also reminds us that we need a long-term exit strategy too because the time is going to come where these markets become overvalued and there will come a time to begin scaling out and we all need a personalized long-term exit strategy too. So why don't we go ahead and pull up some charts and we'll take a look at where we stand. So we'll start this week by taking a look at a chart for the 10-year treasury yield dating all the way back to 1978 and what immediately jumps out at us is this 40-year downtrend line and every time interest rates have tried to rise, they've bounced right off of this downtrend line. And the last time we tapped this line was early 2018. And since then, interest rates had just fallen off of a cliff. And never before had they fallen so far so fast until bottoming at 0.4% in March of 2020. Now, since then, we've rallied strongly and their interest rates have risen, providing a headwind for silver and gold and commodities in general. And we're now approaching this clear area of resistance between 1.5% and 1.7% on the 10-year interest rate. Now, on the daily chart, we are getting extremely overbought. And these wicks here look kind of bearish. So you can make a very compelling case that we're nearing a short-term top here, which should at least provide a temporary reprieve for the metals. However, the trend is still going to be up in interest rates unless we get back below this 200-day moving average. Now, what's interesting here is that the Fed is rapidly approaching a point where they are going to have to make a difficult choice between number one, pricking the everything bubble and allowing interest rates to rise, or number two, stepping in to suppress rates via more quantitative easing, more currency creation, which would obviously allow inflation to run hot. So they're going to have to make that choice. And history suggests that 100% of the time, without fail, they always ultimately end up choosing inflation over pricking the bubble. Because if they allow that bubble to prick, they're on the receiving end of the blame. Where if they choose inflation, people don't understand it. People don't understand inflation and they don't know where to place the blame. So I would look for some backing off of interest rates here in the short term, which should provide a reprieve for the metals. 
Turning to a chart of, for gold here, we see this clear downtrend channel dating all the way back to August of 2020, and currently we're hugging the lower boundary of that channel, just above the 1690 to 1715 support zone, and that support is reinforced by this Fibonacci support level. And what this is telling us is that gold has given back almost 60% of its gains that were achieved in 2020, and that's a really healthy pullback. Now, while I do think that we are nearing a bottom here, downside risk does remain. It's possible for us to pull back another $100 or so. While I don't expect that, it's possible. However, even if we do start to bottom here, the chart won't begin to look bullish until and unless we get back above this 200-day moving average, followed by making a new high. In other words, breaking the series of lower highs at this 1878 level. Looking at a long-term monthly chart for gold, we can see we lost support of this big arc pattern, and this could turn out to be a big cup and handle pattern. Now with cup and handle patterns, you typically don't retrace more than one third to at most one half of the recent gain. So we're currently sitting about one third down. So we really could bottom any place here. Now it's possible, like I said, that we pull back towards this $1,600 level and carve out a nice handle there. But I tend to think that we're much closer to a bottom. Turning to silver, we've been watching this primary green uptrend line, and I've been saying that if we do lose support at this green uptrend line, the path of least resistance would be a pullback towards this 200-day moving average, which currently sits just a few pennies above $24. So if we do get that pullback, I think that could present a really compelling buying opportunity in silver. Conversely, resistance is between $29.92 and $30.35, and once we get back above those levels, I think we could really be off to the races in silver. GDX is the senior gold mining ETF, and zooming out to an eight-year weekly chart, we see this clear downtrend channel, which has brought us to an area of very strong support here, between $30 and $32, and back tests of major support levels often make really compelling entry points. And I've said this before, if I told you back in August that you'd be able to buy stocks at a 30 plus percent discount, uh, most people would jump all over that. But buying the dip is actually more difficult than saying you plan to buy the dip. Turning to the junior silver miners, junior silver miners have held up much better than their gold mining counterpart parts. And the SILJ junior silver mining ETF today on Friday looks to be forming this bullish candle right above this 200-day moving average. So price dipped below this 200-day moving average, almost tapped this clear green uptrend line that is obvious to everyone. And now we're, we're back above this 200-day moving average. That would be pretty bullish if we can close back above the 200-day moving average. Turning to uranium, uranium lost key support last week at this critical $29 level, and now we're extremely oversold on spot uranium, especially on the daily chart. This is a weekly chart. The daily chart is even more extremely oversold, and I think uranium and the uranium miners are due for a bounce. Interestingly, a lot of the uranium mining stocks today on Friday are bouncing right off of their 50-day moving average. As I've said many times, that uranium spot price is going to have to rise as the uranium mining companies need at least $50 uranium, probably much higher to incentivize the new production that's going to be needed for all of these nuclear power plants that are coming online. Nuclear is a growth industry, and $30 uranium just isn't enough to incentivize that new production that's going to be needed. URNM is my favorite uranium mining ETF, and this one had just been on a... URNM is my favorite uranium mining ETF, and this one had just been on fire from late 2020 all the way up to February of 2021. We've since pulled back, and we're nearing this critical support level at $48.59. This was previous resistance, now support, and uranium miners are beginning to look much more attractive for long-term accumulation, although, of course, more downside is always possible. However, the upside is tremendous in the uranium sector. Another chart I like to track to gauge sentiment and gain, gauge the trend in the uranium sector is by looking at Cameco. Cameco is the blue chip stock in the uranium sector. And we can see here on Friday, that's today, gold came back, tested this 50-day moving average to the penny, and is now rallying. And it looks like it's going to close above this key support level between 1485 and 1515. Now, a lot of you guys know I like to use the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. And what's interesting here is that often when you get a 200-day moving average breakout, like we did back here in December, you typically come back and test this 50-day moving average two to four times before the trend kind of needs to reset and take a breather. So we came back, tested the 50-day right here perfectly. Our members actually got alerted to a trading idea right here, and we captured that uh, nice little run-up. 
So we bounced off this 50-day moving average one time. Now today marks a second time. So I believe this trend does still have room to run. And a lot of uranium miners are actually looking pretty compelling here. Now when we zoom out to a long-term chart of Cameco dating all the way back to 2007, we can see that just last week we broke above this clear downtrend channel, which is very bullish. And then we've since come back and back-tested this downtrend line and are trying to rally off of it. Now a major breakout here in Cameco has very bullish implications for the uranium sector as a whole. And like I said, we're very bullish on uranium, not just in 2021, but in the years ahead. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. I look forward to speaking with you next week. Have a wonderful rest of the week. God bless. Okay, thank you for watching this video. So if you enjoyed this and you wanna see more regular market updates, from Steve from Silver Chartist, be sure to hit the like button on this side right over there and this side right over there and leave a comment down below and let us know if you enjoy this. If so, we'll keep making more of these. Now, I want you to go to the link in the description in the comments right there down below. That's to sign up to Steve's free newsletter. Like I said, I had him on because it's literally the best free newsletter that I'd ever seen. And I said, Steve, I'd love to have you as a regular market update. And you know, we're gonna create the most valuable valuable sector that we can on YouTube to help as many people as possible. And so if you want to take it the next step, learn mining stocks, really the in-depth of what's happening in mining stocks, in gold, in silver, in the overall financial markets, in uranium. If you want to see this all broken down, that's the Silver Chartist newsletter. There's a free link to it right there down below in the description and pinned to the comments right there down below. Last but not least, hey, thank you, Steve, for coming on here today, educating and a us on what's happening in the world.